Force, and the username is MR, lowercase one, like Mr. One, MR1, and the password is MR1. Now, I have about four hours of content that I want to cover in the next 19 and a half minutes. So rather than just talk real fast, uh, I put up my notes and links and all this stuff on my blog. So informal, without the A, I-N-F-O-R-M-L dot com, the top item will be the things that I'm going to walk us through because I want to talk about technologies which are under the radar, stuff that's not being shown down on the first floor, but that I think is appropriate for learning, both for ourselves and for others. Now, the music is partly because music is cool, but partly is to show off uh, collaborative technology. This is Blip FM. Blip FM enables you to be your own disc jockey. I picked this song. But what's cool about it is it lets you look at what other people choose as music, so you can learn about music by looking at the taste and what others have selected. So I'm learning about Brazilian music from a friend of mine who's Brazilian. And I could be learning about other topics the same way. Yeah, the music's nice, but it's distracting, so we'll cut that off. And we will come back to essentially my blog. And I think it's important these days that we sort of indeed think through new paradigms. This idea that I'm going to tell you everything is not really taking advantage of the learning situation as much as letting you join in the conversation. So if you are online, you can go to Back Noise, this link. In fact, actually go to this link. And this opens up a space where any of us can write whatever we want. And I'll flip back and forth this every now and then just to see if you've had comments or questions, whatever. Uh, I was hoping that we'd be able to set up where we had this on this screen and this on this screen and then found out, well, we've only got one screen. So I'll... Uh, Actually, what I'll do is simply move this over here where we can see anything that anybody writes. We'll open up a new window. And then in the new window, I will come back to my blog. And this is really challenging my technical skills. I'm a klutz when it comes to using this stuff. Now, in ways, it's crazy for me to be talking about the technologies when my dear friend and colleague Jane Hart is in the room. And if you don't know it, the way to find out about technologies is simply to go to Jane's site. Why can I not see the whole thing here? and to look at not just the pick of the day, but the top 100 list. Just to see where we are, how many people here write a blog? How many bloggers in the group? Well, hey, healthy number, a lot more than last year. How many use Twitter? Oh boy. How many watch TED Talks? I may not have to give this talk at all. How many use an RSS reader? Whew, what a difference a year makes. Um, a, a little intro just on changing nature of learning, which will justify some of the things that I want to talk about. Um, I'm coming to view learning as just sort of what it takes to get along well at life and in work, what it, lead, what it takes to have a fulfilling life. And, Part of it is just that with the speed up of change, studying the past doesn't get you that much anymore because the future is bound to be different. Um, other factors are that the, the certainty that we used to have, the sort of Newtonian uh, opposite uh, and equal reaction for every action is out the window. And I think we've advanced from the 
certainty of Isaac Newton to the uh, sort of complexity and uncertainty of Niels Bohr, and this means that we need tools where we can go out and find out the new stuff, because we ain't gonna find it in books, and usually we're not gonna get it in classes. Another of the major, major changes is that we've gone from a thing where I'm the learner and I get graded on things and I'm expected to be able to go to a library and find things out on my own to we're all in it together and so things that are shared are becoming much more important and a lot of the tools have collaborative aspects which I'll suggest if, <laughs> if learning technology does not have collaborative aspects maybe it's not the best technology at all. Now, into some of the show and tell. Aggregation, collecting feeds, being able to select things, is just starting to kick off. This is a brand new thing. Uh, Tony Carr and I developed it. And essentially, it's a smart aggregator, aggregator and it takes from, and all these things have to be seeded somewhere. So this happens to be the stuff that Jay follows. So we, we started with blogs that I frequently go to and read. And then from that, we picked out some keywords and people, concepts, things like that. And this thing is continuously amassing what's going on and it's influenced by the popularity and what other people are looking at. And it gives me this sort of news feed, this one being on the field of informal learning, which is continuous. And I find that it's a great way for discovery learning, just to, to hop in. And in fact, I've given up in the last week uh, reading a lot of the things that I used to. You can do things selectively with a tool like this. For instance, if I look at Jane Hart, and I wanted to see, well, what's Jane said about corporations. There are 10 posts that mention Jane Hart and uh, corporations. Uh, so it, it lets me sort of zoom in on things. I think we're gonna see a lot more in the way of intelligent aggregators. Now, another thing about aggregation, about pulling feeds together, is what's called activity streams. Two months ago, we call these life streams. But well, what it is, it's an answer to the fact that instead of just going to somebody's blog today, they've got Twitter things, they've got Flickr things, they've got stuff that's just all over the place. And you can aggregate this into what's called a, an activity stream. And friend feed is one of the most popular. So here's mine. And it's just got all manner of different stuff that Jay's been up to. But the power comes in that I can look at other people, and in fact, I can look at collections of other people's feeds, and if I'm in a particular area, I can track experts, people I, I trust, and also the people that they're looking at. So you can package up RSS feeds and things, and no longer you'd have to go through long lists in a reader. The new stuff is sort of coming at you. Is this making sense? I'm not, not sure. Um, for the more visual among us, another tool is Tumblr. And Tumblr, I was at the Imperial War Museum with George Siemens yesterday, and Tumblr it takes, in addition to all your feeds and things, whatever photographs that you've posted to Flickr and just puts them up there. Um, you do have to watch uh, how personal your photographs get, I guess. The tools that uh, I'm going to jump into next, I want to show you where you can find them on my sites. And at the same time, I'll be showing you sort of Jay's ecosystem, how I keep track of the world, uh, just for memory's sake, not for vanity purposes, but jcross.com uh, can lead you to any of the technologies that we're talking about here. From jcross.com, oh, let's look at, say, photographs. I think Flickr is just cool as can be, but there's a problem. When you look at Flickr, you get like 10 photographs at a time, so it's sort of slow to sort through. So one that's available to everybody 
is a Flickr site which shows you 100 photographs at a time when it's working. There we go. So this way I can sort of scan a whole bunch of pictures and then zoom in on the particular one that I care for. Now, I'm assuming that you're all making the leap of imagination about, who, how can we use this stuff in our particular in-house programs? Um, let's see, I'm gonna go back, because I wanna show you a few other things in sort of my ecosystem. One is a research page. I, I find wikis very valuable just for creating sites. How many people have a personal wiki? I have fewer hands on this one, I bet. We've got some, got some. It, it's marvelous to be able to just create pages and have them out on the net. There are other ways to do it, but that's all this is, and it lets me go back to sort of familiar paths. I think of information in terms of that that's flowing by, and then that's, that's sort of pooled and vetted. And in the flowing by, a river view of news, to me, is often a more pleasant way to read the feeds and the things that are happening. I get to select whose stories are in the river. Come on, river. And I can simply, uh, Robin Goods are always too long for me. Uh, but I can simply go through and read entire feeds this way. God, that's a long one. A joke I don't get. Wikipedia, tightening, editing, da 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 And I don't know, I, I find it more comfortable, uh, I don't know about you, than going through and hitting individual RSS feeds, for which I find I have not that much patience anymore. Other things that are on here, search. You know, it's not that difficult these days to put together, using Google or a number of other tools, specialized searches. So that if I want to search about some learning technology thing, I don't want to have the advertising, the spam, the anything that happened to use the words pop up. There are about 12 people whose opinions I want to use as a first filter. So on the, the first search here, I put a term in it, I'm only gonna get stuff from their sites. You can specify what sites you want to draw things from. Stock, the opposite of flow, I'll point out seminal documents. Frankly, I wish more people did this. I picked out like the two dozen things that I think are really basic to understanding. I mean, if you haven't read the Clue Train Manifesto, You've missed an easy on-ramp onto you know, how business is transacted these days. Uh, George Seaman's uh, Knowing Knowledge is a beautiful work that explains why decentralization really matters. The Cathedral and the Bazaar is a, sort of the seminal uh, manifesto in the open source movement. So, I don't know, I've, I've, for me at least, it's useful to have stuff like this on a wiki where I can go back and grab it as I wish. Now, to be honest, is another part of the ecosystem that designed entirely for me, but I couldn't live without, and it's available, click away on that page. And it's my interface. It's simply my jump page. Uh, there are lots of ways to do this, but for me, going back to a list proves easiest. And all of the, the under-the-radar tools happen to appear in the, the, the tool list on the interface because, indeed, they're the ones that I live with. If you don't know Ning, well, sign up for the community for this very conference. You can set up a Ning community site in about five to ten minutes. It is phenomenal and it gives you access to member profiles, to uh, blogging tools, to ongoing discussions, to calendaring software. It's, it's truly a work of art. And in fact, if anybody has questions about stuff that I breeze over, because we're 
since we're going in high bandwidth mode here, you can go to this first conference on mining community and ask questions there. And uh, I or somebody else in the community will be glad to shoot an answer your way. Some interesting publishing tools. Do people know Mimeo? M-I-M-E-O? This is a firm that started in the US. They do on-demand printing. They do on-demand printing in marvelous ways. You can call for things that are printed in color or spiral bound or all different sizes or starting next month, A4 as well as eight and a half by 11. And in terms of fulfillment, these people have a fully automated printing plant. You can go online, specify what you want, upload a PDF file or whatever, say how many copies, or if it's prearranged and you always want four in Singapore and 32 in Hong Kong and 52 in London, it'll send them all out to the right addresses. The printing plant is right next door to the FedEx terminal in Memphis. So once you place an order, uh, it can be on the airplane about four hours later for panic things or new products or, hey, we just acquired a new company. We've got to get the word out to a lot of people. This kind of service is simply phenomenal. Uh, the whole online printing uh, field has changed amazingly. Video production used to be, you know, a hassle and a half uh, still not always that easy due to formats. Uh, certainly when we're uh, working with uh, corporate things, we don't want to just sort of flip it up on YouTube and see if the world finds it. A new service that actually uh, started live last Friday is called Vodia. And with Vodia, you have an account, you simply go to that account, which is what I did last night, or I guess night before last, and you can create a My video. My name is Jay, and I wanted to show how the Odia can take a video, an easy supply to make it, but what's neat is when I'm through with it, it loads it directly into the cloud, no intervention, and I can keep it in a secure space. It's not like uh, putting something on YouTube where the whole world gets to see it. So this is a technology with, I think, a great future. Yeah, it's Sun Microsystems. If somebody makes a really killer sale, they have an interview on Veodia about what's the elevator pitch for that? How did that work? Why did it work? And it's there like an hour after the sale is made because all you have to do is tap in and it's, it's loaded. So this is uh, gonna make it a whole lot easier for us to work with video. Now for short videos, this is more of a novelty item, I think, but I've been using iJot. Now, iJot... Hi, this is iJot. It's a simple, easy, clickable way to send video email, <coughs> which is a handy thing to do if you want to show a motion or if you want to do show and tell, like here's my pet muskox. Uh, so, iJot.com. So that one's free. Most stuff I talk about is free, by the way. Scribed is a handy way to deal with documents. Now, what Scribed will do, it's an, another freebie, is let you keep an online repository of documents, PDF files, things like that, and it converts them into a fast to read, you know, most liked of all time, that's a better sequencing. I've got 45 articles up there, I guess. And uh, you can, Take the things and beep, get off of there, blow them up. And this is uh, situations that you can deal with with uh, e-learning technologies. Now, got things on collaboration, Google, etc. but because we're interactive, and because I just hit the 20 minute mark, that's all for now. These links are all online at informal.com. Now, I do need to go and see if anybody wrote things and, oh, hey, we've got stuff on the back channel. Sorry that I forgot about you. I'm still not used to this. 
do, do, do. Yahoo Pipes, good way to aggregate. True, true, true. I got confused by Yahoo Pipes, so I don't use it. Uh, is there an aggregator aggregator? Well, yes, in ways there is. Things like friend feed will take an aggregation stream and treat it as just another RSS feed. So if you want it, you could have you know, cascading levels of these type of things. Mac users rock well, of course. A year ago, my expensive ThinkPad, the 12th one I had had, totally fell apart. I threw the son of a bitch in a garbage and never want to see Microsoft again. Uh, not that I am biased. Um, Let's see, the Wi-Fi is there. Well, yep, some people are using it. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much.